Hi everyone, this is the third episode of Jelly Making. We're going to try Yucca Blossom Jelly. It might not be very good because Yucca Blossoms are more of a cabbage-like texture what? and flavor. I mean, they're really waxy and rubbery, but their yeah. flavor is kind of cabbage-y, artichoke-y. Yeah, we had a lot of people just eat the flower on its own. And we got a lot of different reactions to it, but most of them were some type of bitter salad plant. Well, we figure we'll try it because it's an edible flower, so why not? I'm hoping to get a half batch of jelly out of it. So I'm doing nearly four cups because quite a bit evaporates. These are our blossoms that we picked off of yuccas and they are a real waxy they are real, real waxy and like thick not like other petals I don't know if you can see they're a lot like cabbage in texture and here is our helpers again who just cleaned up the... Did they eat it? I think so. Either that or Bofors hoarding it. They think it might be food. They're not sure. No, he's just hoarding it. He's being a jerk. A lot of people that do stuff with yucca blossoms, they uh, eat them in salads or they fry them. Which again, they... Tastes like a salad, plant, artichoke, or not artichokes. Cabbage. Cabbage. A lot of people do say artichokes. Asparagus. I think that's what your dad said. Yeah. And we've got our water bath counter boiling, so once all this is ready, it will be ready to go. Radish. I think someone else said radish. It you tastes said radish. So. My mom said disgusting, and my brother said it tastes like soap, so uh, there's a lot of mixed reviews on the petal itself, but you never know, because with jelly making, you're adding the sugar and the pectin, and it does change it, and you're cooking it. Yep, so we'll see how this turns out. Hopefully it's as good as our last batch. I doubt it. <laughs> The water's boiling, so I'm going to turn it off and let it steep for about 15 minutes. And we'll see what it looks like when we come back. Alright, it's been steeping for a while. So now we're going to strain it. I can see that the, the water's colored. Definitely not clear anymore, but this might just taste like cabbage water. And I think that made plenty of juice. It doesn't smell great. Like it smells kind of like salad. Which is not making me real hopeful for the uh, flavor of the jelly. <laughs> What do you think, Jason? Well, I have, like, no sense of smell. Yeah, it just tastes like salad. <laughs> yeah. It, boiling it or steeping it or whatever you called it does not change the flavor too much. Hmm. You know, it does change the flavor a little bit. Sorry. From last, like, it, from tasting it fresh, literally picking it off and putting it in my mouth to now. Um, it's three cups. I don't want to do a whole batch. I think I'm going to pour some out because it literally smells like salad. <laughs> so I would rather just have a half a batch. So we want about one and three quarters. Which again, this is something if I really had 
a good garden or something, I would pour it into compost and not just down the drain. But do not have compost. Yeah. And I know this isn't going to, uh, what's the word? Imbued you with confidence, yeah. hon. Yeah, imbued. But, uh, there's not that bitter aftertaste in the leaf or in the petal anymore. Well, because when you taste great, it fresh, so it might be a bitter in the. Yeah. Okay, so that was one tablespoon. Our lemon juice is just about gone now. When we got another bottle. I want to light today. Turn it. I like keeping it somewhere between high and medium. But now we need three tablespoons of pectin. And then we want to dissolve the pectin and we want it to come to a boil and then we will add the sugar. I think one thing we love doing with the uh, jellies is we always take them down to her mother's house. And all the nieces and nephews come over and taste it. And they give us some of the most interesting reviews of some of the things. Sometimes they're like, yeah, it's great, it's awesome. But one time we made something, made a jelly, and it got negative thousand out of ten. And you, or thumbs down. So I have a suspicion this one might be uh, one of those. <laughs> Again, don't forget to sterilize your jars and your rings and to wash your lids. If you liked it, you should put a ring on it. <laughs> I'm going to use mostly little jars for this because this is definitely what I would call a tasting jelly. Personally, I don't know if anybody's going to like this. <laughs> I do have a friend in Michigan that seems to like more savory almost jellies. Or at least, like, heavily floral or herbaceous flavored jellies. So maybe she'll like them. It's always fun to do something unusual. Like, there's no way you're going to go to any store and find yucca flower jelly. And again, if you're planning to make any jelly with flower petals, just make sure... Uh, to do your research and make sure you can it's do edible. it. It's edible and you're not going to poison yourself or whoever eats it. And wash your petals. Yeah, definitely wash your petals um, while picking uh, petals around here. Um, we had to be very careful because the bees are definitely out. And so we disturbed a few bees, unfortunately. And those are the nice ones. Yeah. Not to mention all the little black, whatever, can't, they're so Bugs tiny. that we have. Yeah. Alright, um. and now we will bring it back up to a boil, which is pretty much already there. Hmm. That's really interesting. This one's boiling really fast compared to any of the other jellies right. we've ever made. So maybe something in the yucca plant withholds the heat. It is a desert plant. I don't know. But, 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 yeah, I'm going to go ahead and time it. Two minutes. And leave, well, I'm just going to leave it alone for the two minutes and then we will jar it. All right, this one foamed up. Some jellies do. You really have to watch them while you're making them because otherwise you might end up with jelly all over your pan and your stove. And it's difficult to clean. Yeah, once it burns on, it's really hard to clean. And again, it's got the foam on top, which you can always scrape off if you want to. But... 
I don't care that much about how it looks. That one's a little bit underfilled. You know, like comparing this one to our last video, the foam isn't as thick. Mm -hmm. It's different for every flower. But it's probably also because the hollyhock had kind of a goopy texture. Well, maybe it's like a difference of savory versus sweet, since we're expecting this one to be more savory. No. I don't think so. Oh, I do want to mention real quick, yes, we've been uh, self-picking, self-harvesting plants where we can um but do check your laws do check your laws because of course there's some plants that are protected um and then also if you don't have that option to go pick of course you can go to the store um, for some things for some mm -hmm. things um to go buy like say you could go buy strawberries blueberries at most stores um, or you can see if you have a tea shop or something like that in town, a uh, herbal shop, because sometimes they sell flower petals. We were, we've been able to find some there, um, that we've made before, uh, at our local tea slash herb and herb spice. Shop, yeah. So... Um, that might be a better option for some people who just don't have the ability to go out and pick wild growing flowers. And you know that whatever's in the herb shop is edible most likely. You can always ask them, but as far as I know, ours doesn't sell anything that's not edible. Real quick, behind the scenes, we gave some of the yucca jelly to our neighbor and they loved it. I did get mixed reviews between family members and friends. And again, we like to remind everyone, uh, when you're doing jellies or canning of any kind, uh... If you're going to store them, they often suggest don't store them with the lid. The ring. The ring. Not the lid. The lid needs to stay on. Uh, uh, don't stack them on top of each other because that can break the seal. Put them in a cool, dark place. Make sure they're labeled. Make sure they have the date labeled of when they were canned. So that... You can research and figure out how long jellies last, depending on how you're storing it. Once they're open, jellies will last for up to a year in the fridge. So you could even also mark when you opened them on top. Oh, my lid fell in. Alright, and this is going to be 15 minutes. So now the fun taste test of this jelly. Uh, we're not really looking forward to this, but it is jellifying when it's cooling. See, this is what most jellies taste like to me. It's very bitter. It's really not bad. It just kind of tastes like an herby jelly, not... It tastes sweet because of the sugar, but... Yeah. It doesn't taste like cabbage or anything anymore. But it does taste kind of herby. But it really did change the flavor a lot. Like it, mm -hmm. I don't Way like different. it, but it's a lot better than I was expecting. And it's always good to wash up with hot water as soon as you're done. Because once the jelly dries, it gets harder to wash off. Yep. Just a little FYI. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. And... Can you give me my little thingy that's... Yeah, that. You can use this guy if you don't have the lifter. But I much prefer the lifter. But the handle fell in. But this is to grab stuff. There's little kits at Walmart for pretty cheap. 
but I like the lifter. And you can just lift it up and leave it there to cool. And it'll slowly pop and you don't have to worry about it cooling too fast and breaking jars. All that's left is labeling and sending. And see if we can't get the kids opinions on it. Their opinion is probably going to be yuck, but... We'll see. We'll see. Um, we're working on sunflower jelly. It's got water in it though because I had more than half of a full recipe but not quite a full recipe. I was a half cup short so there's half cup of water in it which it's three and a half cups of juice for the recipe. So now the juice, the lemon juice and the pectin is bubbling starting to boil. You can see the bubbles on the edge so we can start adding the six cups of sugar Um, I will type out my the recipe that I use for the jelly recipe. I use the same recipe for everything that I've made, every jelly I've made. But you don't have to add the lemon juice if you're doing something that's already as sour as that. Whether that's some kind of like flour or something. But like citrus fruit, you don't have to add the lemon juice. It's already sour enough. I don't know that sour is the right word, but... Acidic? Maybe. Now that it's boiling, we are timing it for two minutes again. And we just let it boil for the two minutes, and then we decant it into jars. Yep. I know some of you are saying it's not boiling, but there's these tiny bubbles here. That's enough for us to consider that it's boiling. It's well, jelly's also like real thick, and it normally doesn't boil in the center until it starts like overboiling. If it starts boiling in the center, it usually starts foaming up and you have to turn the temperature down really quick or else it gets everywhere. Uh, one thing we want to add real quick. Um, and this is many months after the yucca jelly. Um, you can see the skin on top. Oh yeah, that's weird. That's, that's the what... skin. Um, like I said, if you want, you can scrape that out. Um, if you don't care about it, you don't have to. It's not bad to eat. It's pretty much the same flavor. It just doesn't look as nice. But uh, with the yucca jelly, we've had lots of mixed reviews. Some said it was okay. The nieces our, and nephews just absolutely hated it. And our neighbor said that out of all the jellies we gave them, that was their favorite. Her and her grandson both loved the yucca jelly the best. It was very savory type. We already said that earlier. Of jelly. But the yucca jelly is like the beginning of summer and these sunflowers are most of summer that you can pick sunflowers. Yeah. But this is sunflower petals that are growing wild around us. So... When you put the lids on and the rings on, you tighten the rings to fingertip tightness, which just means like you don't grab the jar and tight it, tighten it. You just twist it on until it's, you can't twist it without turning the jar like that. Um, so that's just something to know. Like it doesn't have to be super, super tight. into the water bath counter and they will be in the water bath counter for 10 minutes. Okay. So now time for the taste test. I didn't even really get any. Like, like it's a very light flavor. There's a floral flavor. It's sweet because of the sugar, obviously, but it's 
It's very light, probably because we added the water. But it's definitely so, floral. Yeah, you can taste it. You can taste that it's a flower, too. Like, it's not just like, hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure what it... I don't like, know. I can't really compare it. Because mm -mm. what was that first flower we did? Uh, dandelion. Oh, it doesn't taste like the dandelion no, to me. but that's the, the closest I can think of is comparing it to. Maybe. You can hear the jars still cooling behind us. When they pop, that's good. It means it's sealed. But for now, that's the end of our experimentation with the yucca flowers. But again, we'll try to get some people's opinions. So we'll try to update probably in a couple weeks because it takes a while to send. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye.